I think we can all agree that Ohm is overpowered. But why is it so overpowered and how to get to that level? Well, find out by watching this video carefully. If we get 10,000 likes, I'll be doing the second part where we start turning this into a world conquest. And I am trying to get to 115,000 subscribers, which is the goal in order to get my waifu to play some EU4. So help me out with that and I'll make sure you guys get a really interesting and entertaining video. One of the best things about Ulm is that the starting leader is actually randomly generated at the beginning of a game so you can get a 666 from day one if you're willing to restart enough times or you can get a 000. It's your choice what kind of a leader you want to start with. I'm happy with the 442 more than enough. So obviously the first thing we'll be doing is we'll be summoning the diet and going for whichever agenda best suits us. We'll also be giving the plus one monthly mana privileges for all three estates the minus 25 advisor cost reduction privileges as well but we're actually gonna give these out after one month has passed so we can get one stability religious diplomat is actually pretty good as well supremacy over the crown patronage of the arts for the extra prestige and we're also gonna give out the right of counsel for the nobility make sure to set the encouraged development edict and because Ulm is a free city you also get another minus 10 development cost reduction from the reform as well so developing this province is ridiculously cheap we're gonna dev it up twice and i'm here twice because i have my mission to dev it up twice and i get some money from that afterwards i'm seizing crownlands and i'm only getting 0.20 autonomy debuff rival wise whatever nation is closest to you you want to rival so for me that would be augsburg Württemberg, as well as ingolstadt gonna also make my leader a general and i'm gonna recruit the free city company free cities have two free companies the free city and the regular free company so we essentially have eight thousand troops that are ridiculously cheap 70 percent cheaper than the regular mercenary units for that matter before we recruit those units however we're gonna get a claim on Württemberg, and we'll be getting a second claim on augsburg but first we're gonna start getting some alliances you're not gonna be able to get too many big allies at the start so whatever you can is fine no one will attack you because you are a free city in the hre so because you are a free city if anyone attacks you the emperor is gonna defend you automatically even if if they have a claim on you the emperor is still gonna defend you so it's like having alliance with the emperor even though you don't have one take note once you have more than one city you're gonna lose the reform so you're not gonna be a free city anymore and you're gonna need to have some proper allies at that point we're halfway with getting our claim so let's recruit the free company now we're doing this because we're gonna need a few months in order to get the morale up for this army we got our one stab and we're now gonna get the uh, minus 25 advisor cost reduction privileges for all three estates and i want to make a quick side note if you're planning on just staying in the city of Ulm and not expanding too much well in that case the autonomy debuff does not matter because you're not getting autonomy in your capital city there you go we got zero autonomy and even though it says it's increasing per month it's actually not increasing so essentially out of all these debuffs absolutism doesn't matter because it hasn't been triggered yet we don't have subject so it doesn't matter that we get subject liberty desire autonomy doesn't affect us and the monthly tax debuff is negated by the plus 20 that we get from the clergy so we essentially don't have any of debuffs in reality and we got the plus one privileges as well as 25 percent cheaper advisors oh what baden wants to ally me this would not be such a bad alliance i'm pretty sure baden would help me against vattenbug but i don't want it because i'm gonna attack baden right after vattenbug and i don't want to cut my expansion path with the having to wait for the truce to finish with them all right we can get our claim here the city of stuttgart's got 11 developments so we're gonna get the claim on that one bring the diplomat back i also noticed that i can get a quick alliance with rottenberg so let's do that as well we got our second ally and of course it is time for the ver we can call in rottenberg if we promise them some lands and you know what i am gonna promise them lands but i'm not actually gonna deliver let's declare the war Buya shakalu let's go for stuttgart before rottenberg arrives there looks like we got a little bit of a mexican standoff over here i'm gonna take over stuttgart and after that i'm gonna attack them uh, in Ulm where I should have the defender advantage. Stuttgart is now out. Let's go ahead and attack them in Ulm. Hopefully our allies are actually going to help us out. They are going to help us out. Nice. Let's take advantage of this. It should be a very easy stack wipe against Nuremberg's army and it was. Wait for one month to recover our morale then we're going to go back to Stuttgart. Actually we're going to take out Saxe Lauenberg's army out first. Otherwise they might reinforce when we attack in Stuttgart. And we're also going to take out these reinforcements here. Nice. Now we can attack Stuttgart finally and and it should be a fairly easy battle as well. Nice. They got no more troops left, do they? They got 
zero units altogether. Absolutely love this. And you guys probably thought that I'm gonna get completely wiped out, didn't you? Sometimes I feel like this game is a little bit of uh, the Benny Hill show, where you have to chase units across the map for half a freaking hour. I could wait for this siege to finish, but I really don't need anything from Sax Allowenberg. And for the 25 ducats I would be getting from them, it's more of a waste of my manpower pull here. I prefer to piece them out so I can actually piece out the main war target, which is uh, Wurttemberg, of course. We're gonna have to siege down Wurttemberg, sadly, because they don't agree to my terms just yet. Or, alternatively, we can just wipe out this 1,000 units they got lying around. And with these boys out, they technically should be piecing us out. There you go, they are willing now. Barely willing, but still willing. And we're gonna piece out Wurttemberg. We're gonna take everything they have. Obviously, we're not gonna give anything to uh, Ruthenberg, even though we promised that we would. Because we've also been getting a spy network on Baden. We can get our claim on them now. They're allied to the Palatinat, which is a strong nation. But if we wipe out Baden's army first, we should be able to fight against both of these nations at the same time. We can now assign Baden as our rival also. And as I said before, we're no longer a free city. We're now an oligarchy, which is essentially what Russia is today. <laughs> Let's start the next war. Booyashakalu. And it looks like they're actually going to get reinforced in this one. That is not good for me. If I get some good rolls, I should win. If I get bad rolls, I'm going to lose this. I got good rolls. That was really, really close, though. Let's get these boys over here as well. So we can on the entirety of Baden. And let's get another loan in order to get the next free company. Actually, two loans. We're going to hire the free company. So we have both the free company and the free city company. Even though we're not a free city anymore, we still get to keep that free city company. I absolutely love it when the AI splits up their army into two sides, essentially making it ridiculously easy for me to wipe them out. Eine Udastaken va Paniken, boyos! And we're gonna get rid of the last of the Palatinat in a while. First, I wanna siege down the capital of Baden, of course. Hey, we got Durlash as well, boyos. Now it's time to kill the Palatinat's army. And the great part is, because we're defending, since this is our fort, they got the minus one crossing penalty when fighting us here. Hopefully we can chase them down a little bit after as well. Noise, that's an extra 8% war score. Let's chase the boyos down. We can't really stack wipe them because we have to take the fort in Heidelberg in order to get to the other two provinces they got here. You also might be wondering what am I doing whenever the Austrians are asking me for unlawful territory. The answer is I'm ignoring them. If they're gonna declare war on me for unlawful territory, that's fine. We'll deal with that. But I'm literally just ignoring them. That's the best approach to these kind of situations. The chance of them declaring me for unlawful territory is actually quite low. And just as I said that, guaranteed next up they're gonna declare on me i can feel it already i'm gonna teach you guys a trick that really separates the newer players from the more experienced ones so i just realized that austria was improving relations and now they have above 100 relations with them which essentially means that they're very likely to enforce peace on me and i don't want them to do that because if they do that i cannot take anything from baden so what i'm gonna do in return is i'm gonna peace out baden right now whilst i still can i'm gonna cancel the improved relations on these boys and I'm only taking the one province of Baden, which essentially means I have a connection to the other two cities here that allow for further expansion. I'm actually going to go for the humiliation aside from the money. Daria go. This way, I prevent the Austrians from enforcing a peace on me when I'm at war with another nation. Plus, I didn't completely cuck myself because I still can attack Strasbourg and the nation of Mulhouse, both of which have only one very weak ally. Actually, these guys have Brittany, but these guys have Brigitte. And not to worry because I'm going to be at war with Brigant soon because I'm going to attack Augsburg also, which allied again to Brigant. Why am I attacking all of these nations right now? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First off, having a really fast expansion in the early game means that I'm going to have the economic and military power base to snowball massively in the mid to late game. And I have a lot of aggressive expansion, but because I got all of this aggressive expansion in the first few years of the game, it's slow slowly ticking down whilst I chill after my first few wars. Another reason I pieced out is because it's been exactly 5 years since the start and I can seize another 5% crown loans. In order to avoid rebellions, I'm just gonna summon the diet which gives me some extra loyalty. There you go. And now we're just getting 0.1 autonomy. Plus, we can do another great mission here. Develop Ulm to 10 production. Sounds pretty good to me because this way we're gonna get 2 cloth since 5 production means 1 trade good. And since we have 10 production, it essentially means that we're producing two cloth in this province. We also want to form the nation of Swabia. And in order to form Swabia, all that I need is 10 provinces that are Swabian culture. That means 
these, these provinces here. I need Augsburg, I need Donauwörth, and these two provinces with the rest of Baden in order to form Swabia. Hey, what do you know, boys? We can get the first tech, and we got four innovativeness because we were the first ones to get military tech. Four sounds also like a great opportunity for me to attack Augsburg since we do have the extra military technology. Bring our diplomat back, make sure it's set to conquest, and let's go. Should be a fairly easy war considering that we have way more troops than everybody else in this alliance block here. We literally just wiped everybody's troops in the first couple of months of the war. That's how OP this is. Remember to keep on checking on Austria to see if they have relations with the nations you're attacking. They do have above 110 relations with Augsburg, so that means they're likely gonna ask me to enforce peace. If that happens, I'm gonna have to accept their demands, sadly, but hopefully it doesn't happen, fingers crossed. Oh, we got one stability event. Let's actually go ahead and get this to two stability, which essentially means we got three stability with the event. Oh boy, we actually managed to siege down Augsburg and still no enforced peace. My butt cheeks are really clenching right now, boys, because I really want to take this one province. It is going to be a little bit of uh, aggressive expansion. It's a massive city with 17 development. And we got Brigands also. Nice. What I'm going to do with Brigands is I'm going to ask them to cancel all of their rivals. This is going to give me 15 prestige, which is vital because prestige in the early game, especially when you're playing in the HRE, first off, it can get you up to minus 10% aggressive expansion impact and improve relations, which are the two most vital things when it comes to avoiding coalitions in the HRE. And second off, it also gives you a boost to your army morale, which always helps. And would you look at that, boys? Augsburg has unconditionally surrendered, which means I have to peace them out now. Let's go ahead and do it. Screw it, bro. Screw it. We're going to peace out. Nice. Let's core this up now. Get some new rivals. We can go for... Oh, Strasbourg we can get as a rival. Why not? Why not? And we can do Dominate Swabia, which gives us Diplo Rep and Improve Relations. Plus, we can go for the Swabian League next, which will help us with our expansion, let's say. We got a couple more Swabian missions here we get a lot more missions after we form the nation of Savabia. let's also make baden a proper full core let's quickly kill off the Württembergian rebels before we declare our war on uh, mulhausen this way we don't need to worry about separatists after we are at war the aggressive expansion is definitely ramping up we got 45 with pretty much everybody around us now so if we were to take over mulhausen we're gonna be pretty much on the threshold here let's see how it goes hopefully we manage to take this without getting a massive coalition against us. Austria only has minus two relations with Mulhouse, which is the leader of the war that I'm having, so they cannot enforce peace on me, because remember, you can enforce peace if you have 100 relations with the leader of the defensive side, like in the previous two wars where they had 100 relations with Austria and 100 relations with Baden. Oh dear, we got the French attacking Strasbourg, do we? Excuse me, sir, but Alsace-Lorraine is German, okay? Can we just leave it as that? Surprised by the fact that Muscovy has not moved an inch and they also allied Odoyev out of all the nations. Meanwhile, Tunis is completely wrecking everybody here. I'm surprised they managed to even attack Fezan, which I think is guaranteed by Mamluks at the start. Or was it guaranteed by Tunis? I really can't remember. By re-electing the same leader for our nation, we managed to get 664 for this boyo. But remember, if we were willing, we could have started with a 666 from day one, which means we would have gotten all of the technologies by now without much stress yeah okay i'm not gonna be able to get this nation uh directly but maybe i can vassalize them that would be nine aggressive expansion not much of a difference i could actually vassalize them if i waited for one or two more years for my aggressive expansion to go down actually so why not i can do that looks like i also siege down brigands in the meanwhile they don't have any more rivals that i can cancel but i can cancel their claims and war reps all this stuff can get me a little bit of prestige as well so let's do that right now. We went up to 49 prestige. I had actually 49 before. I had to lower it by 10 because of some bad events. Now we're back up to almost 50. And would you look at that? The nation of Strasbourg is not going to get helped by Brittany, which is at war with France. So I'm going to attack them now. I'm doing this because I'm going to go for the humiliation CB to go for the show of strength that offers me 300 mana points, 100 for each of the uh, mana classes. They gave me unconditional surrender, which means I'm going to get a lot of war exhaustion now if I don't actually piece them out so I have to piece them out I'll still wait until the uh, first of January so I get less aggressive expansion with everybody around me though oh 
Austria as with Burgundy now. Is this the Liege war? It is, isn't it? Yep. Burgundy always tries to conquer Liege and Austria gets called in. This is a golden opportunity for me to do whatever the schnapps I want in the south of Germany. All right, we got these guys out. Now we just got to deal with uh, mines. So let's go ahead and siege down everything they have as well. Oh, this is so cute, guys. Look at this. They're trying to relieve the siege of Strasbourg. Oh, such a cute little mines. Nice try, mines. Nice try. But it's not going to work and you're going to get Stack and Vapenicum, which means you boys got zero trips now. And I'm just sieging down your capital to empty your bank accounts, okay? I'm role-playing the Swiss here. I'm taking all your money. Was is das? Eine Badener Rebellion? Nein, nein, nein. We can't have it this. Uh. Oh boy, look at Burgundy completely wiping out Palatinat. If they cancel the alliance that the Palatinat has with Austria, I'm actually gonna attack them. Aber unsere Mainz ist Altenstein, ja, ja. And as you expected, we're canceling the rivals as well as going for the War Reparationen, Noise. And for these boyos, like I said before, show us strength and look at my mana points over here. Go up. 300 mana points, boys. 300 mana points. Plus some power projection as well. So we are absolutely loaded when it comes to mana. Let's see how these boys are doing now. Oh, only four people in the coalition. What about if I take this directly? Still four people if I take it directly. You know what? I'm gonna actually gonna take this directly because I want to have it. I don't want to wait for 10 years to integrate Milhausen. Would be a bit of a waste for just eight development. Oh my dear lord, look at all this war exhaustion we managed to get. I want to lower the war exhaustion, but I also need to get the next technology. I'm actually going to lower the war exhaustion because it's really bad at this point. And for the next few years, it's only been 10 years essentially, guys. So for the next few years, I'm only going to chill. I'm not going to expand anymore. I'm going to consolidate the lands that I have, lower the autonomy, of course, and wait for my aggressive expansion to go down. Whilst I'm doing that, I'm also going to get up to technology, strengthen my armies, and get ready for the second phase of the womb expansion in Swabia. Don't forget to also improve relations with Outrage Nations. You can do this automatically from assigning one of your diplomats over here to Outrage Countries. And of course, we're still getting claims. I mean, we are getting ready for the next phase also. Am I right here, boys? Chad Austria also managed to get hungry as a junior partner through the event. So they are definitely quite scary, not gonna lie. The best part about this game is that you can always make something good out of something bad that just happened. I got threatened by the Austrians. So essentially, if I attack any nation that I have common borders with the Austrians, then uh, they're gonna join the war so I cannot attack them. But because they threatened me, the Poles are more than willing to ally me now, and I am gonna take advantage of that particular alliance, just in case I feel like dismantling the HRE at some point. We finally also got Admin Tech 5, which means we can go for our first idea. Obviously, we're gonna go for quantity ideas, followed afterwards by economic ideas, which are the best ideas, both to play tall and to just become ridiculously over Powered. The Shadow Kingdom has started, which can bring up some opportunities if we're a little bit lucky when it comes to the Italian areas. We managed to get an alliance with the Milanese. So right now we got Milan, Brandenburg, and Poland as our main allies. All oh, right, and Salzburg. I actually completely forgot I'm allied to Salzburg. I'm also in the process of improving relations with the other electors. If I can ally a few of the electors, that's gonna come in handy big time. I also have to say it's really strange that Muscovy is not expensive expanding at all. Like, Novgorod's even doing some expansion by attacking the Livonians, who are getting gangbanged by everybody, essentially. But then Muscovy's just chilling there, doing absolutely nothing. Full manpower reserves and full land force limit. I really hope they didn't break Russia for some reason. Oh, this is actually great! Look at this, guys! Baden just allied Memmingen, so that means I can annex Memmingen in the war against Baden. They are a free city, but I'm not gonna co them, and I'm gonna get double the aggressive expansion hit but it's worth it because that's one extra Swabian city that I can get towards forming the nation of Swabia. My aggressive expansion is going down quite a bit as well. I'm at around 30 with all of my neighbors now. All right the truce is over with Baden. I'm gonna do some alliances very quickly even though I'm going over diplo relation slots I'm only getting these alliances until I finish this war because the more allies I have the less nations around me that will have really bad relations with me because allies get less aggressive expansion with you whenever you're taking lands from your enemies. Oh, what? I can ally Burgundy? Holy schnapple. Yes, please. Oh, man, I wish I was a monarchy at this point. I could even get the Burgundian inheritance since they have Charles already. All right, boys, time for another Ver against the Bodenese. Woo! 
you did. Wait for these guys to get movement locked, and now we can engage and kill them off in uh, Heidelberg as well. They did fight this defensively, but we do have significantly more troops than them, so it doesn't really matter. Let's go over and uh, siege down Memmingen now. Looks to me like Palatinat's troops are pretty well scattered around, so we can go and take over Oberfals. They even deleted the fort here, so it's gonna be really easy to get some war score against them now. Ha damn, Brandenburg's killing off the uh, Saxons. And it looks like they're allied to Goslar, another free city, and one of my personal favorite nations, by the way. Goslar's ideas are insane, probably the best playing to all ideas out of all the OPMs in the HRE. If you guys want me to do a video on them, by the way, let me know in the comments. I would love to do a video on these boyos. Goslar forming Prussia is like a dream come true. Hot diggity dog, 500 days to siege this one place down, and my general even died whilst I was sieging it down. Speaking of, let's actually get a new guy. Pray to earn Jesus for some siege pips. We got five maneuver? Really? Okay. I wish it was five siege. Guess we broke a record here. Another 500 something days. Let's kill off the Palatina troops that were hiding away from us. Unbelievable. So the first thing I'm gonna do, obviously, is uh, with the Palatina, I'm gonna cancel all of their alliances. But now the problem is that if I take both of these provinces, I'm gonna get way too much aggressive expansion. In order to wait for this to slowly trickle down, it would take me about four years before I can actually take this peace deal. I also cannot vassalize Memmingen, so that's out of the question. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fully annex Memmingen, even though it's a lot more aggressive expansion that I'm happy with. It is the right move here. Because it's actually very hard to be able to get a free city that is also Swabian, considering that Austria would kill me if I was to directly attack Memmingen. So this was literally just a golden opportunity for me to take this city. And because I cannot wait for five years, I'm gonna peace out the nation of uh, Baden. I'm gonna take all their money, cancel rivals, cancel alliance as well. And if I'm a little bit lucky, Strasbourg, their neighbor over here, is gonna kill them off of me. If I'm not lucky, I'm gonna have to attack them again once my truce is over with them. Oh wow, Brandenburg actually took a massive chunk out of Saxony. And France completely annexed the nation of Brittany. Did not expect to see that actually. Oh wow, it's exactly the same situation with Strasbourg. They allied Constance, the only other free city that is also Swabian. So after I get Constance, Strasbourg and Baden, I can form Swabia because that's the last three cities that I need in order to get 10 provinces with Swabian culture. We've also been re-elected the same dude again and again so our republican tradition is going down the point of this is that once your republican tradition is very low you might be able to switch on over to a monarchy and that's what we're going for and my favorite part about playing ulm is that it's ridiculously cheap to develop these lands most of these are either grasslands or farmlands and because of that look at this we got 35 mana in order to develop this province 36 to develop stuttgart 39 40 and 56 for our capital this this is also without even getting the second idea set so we don't even have our playing tall ideas unlocked yet after we get those it's gonna be insanely cheap to develop and despite having only a few provinces we're literally stronger than most of the big powers we've also invested a little bit of our diplo and military points in getting each province to 10 development so we have an easier time of spawning in the renaissance as one of the basic prerequisites for getting renaissance is having 10 development in your province so if you want to see the second Second part where we form Swabia, destroy the HRE, and get German Empire borders. Then let's get this video to 10,000 likes and check out this awesome Castile video until the next time. And I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support.